In this video, you guessed it, more rust. This time I'm replacing the quarter panels in this 2004 Chevy Suburban 2500. This time I'm challenged to build. This is going to be fun. Well, if you've been following along in this build, uh, you will know that I've been battling a lot of rust on this vehicle. And today is quarter panel replacement. As you can see also, this has common wheel arch rust, the rocker rust, forward quarters uh, on both sides, driver side and passenger side. I found all of the repair panels on Amazon. There will be some links in the description below. <clears throat> they make complete repair panels. They make kits with a couple different pieces. Right now, today's video is gonna be focused solely on the rear quarters. So the first thing I went ahead and did was took the angle grinder and made a, a few quick cuts in the panel, cutting some of the, the crap out of the area and where I'm working because what I wanted to do was I wanted to look and inspect up inside of the panel and I didn't want to have to deal with any rusts or possibility of getting cut on some of that stuff so I went ahead and just got it out of the way. Now that I've inspected up here there's a lot there's a another panel sitting right here and uh, GM in all of its infinite wisdom uses like this foam body seam tape and that's why a lot of this stuff rusts out in these corners. Uh, I don't actually have, well, here we go, right here. They, they have a bunch of this seam tape foam in some of the body uh, mating surfaces, and that holds the water and moisture, and then causes all of this chaos to form. So I thought that might have been spot welded there, and it is not because the gas tanks are out of this right now because of all the other work that I'm doing underneath the frame this is the perfect opportunity to get involved in all this rust repair on this side so I would highly recommend uh, removing your gas tank to do this work uh, but that's entirely up to you you make those decisions this isn't necessarily a how-to video this is more or less this is how I'm doing it uh, one thing in the videos and stuff like that is you want to watch a couple different people doing the same kind of project this way here you can kind of gather all the information that you need to tackle a project like this and then go into it in your own fashion doing your own kind of method so fuel tanks you know get them out keep them safe we are dealing with sparks and fire and welding and heat so keep that in mind as far as a safety thing anyway back to the panel if you look there is the body seam, which is right here, which is gonna coincide with this body seam. And then they give you a little bit of a surface area right above it for either panel bond or spot welds. In here, there are spot welds. So we're gonna drill these out uh, on this side here. And then on the back side of the panel here, you are gonna need a spot weld cutter as well, as far as kind of like a specialty tool. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, obviously this one will be linked in the description. This is from Jetsuis. It looks like a little baby annular cutter. I would personally recommend staying away from the spot weld cutters that you can get from Harbor Freight. Um, they are super cheap and they break very easily. So spend a little bit of extra money and get a good quality spot weld cutter or spot weld drill bit. And then what my thought was is I'm going to take my angle, gr angle grinder and cut just below that body seam, just to where it barely curves over or in to this seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut right along here, drill out the spot welds on either side and the bottom down here, and then we should be able to remove this quarter panel, which will allow me then to test fit the new one. Thank you. 
Sometimes you drill through them if you're not careful. <laughs> you saw that one fighting me. Even though I like the cutter better, the spot weld drill bit also has its place too. Obviously it can fit in tighter places and it would help if I had a little bit smaller drill for this, but we're making it happen. Was pretty painless. Looks better already. This might not be the right way. It might not be the wrong way, but it's going to be my way. Challenge to build, baby. So after getting the quarter panel cut out uh, yesterday, I cleaned up for the day and I'm back at it for a little while tonight. And after cleaning up yesterday, I walked out of the garage and spent a lot of time thinking about how I wanted to move forward with this particular uh, project. And I know I had said I was gonna probably spot weld it. And what I wanna do here with this quarter panel is show you a method of installing it that you won't have to actually use a welder. What I'm going to use is pop rivets and some adhesive. And the adhesive that I'm going to use is even like you wouldn't even really think about it. And I'm kind of curious to see what the comments are going to be after we get to the point of um, installing it. But I wanted to show that there are ways other than welding. Uh, you can't always get away with doing it like this, but with this particular application, uh, it will work out really well. And that's what I'm gonna show you. So before we move on, I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes and clean up some of this stuff. I don't know what you wanna call it, foam panel tape and hit some of this rust with a wire brush. Uh, this side is a lot worse than the passenger side, so I'm actually gonna have to come in here and cut out some of the inner structure as well and bend the piece up to replace this. So I'm gonna clean this up, cut this out, 
um, wire brush and coat this piece with a little bit of core seal over here as well. And then we'll go into putting the quarter panel in. So while the core seal is continuing to dry, I am going to measure for the new uh, inner structure piece. I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut and bend it out of 18 gauge cold rolled steel. And I'm simply just gonna put it on my, uh, my bench back there, take a piece of steel, clamp it down, bend it. It's not really a tight bend, this is more of a radius here and right here. So I'm just taking some quick measurements. I'm gonna go over the bench and bend her up. So now that I have my measurements and what I more or less want it to look like, I'm gonna go ahead and use my plate shear to cut it and then just go through the process of bending, fitting, trimming, and probably do the same thing a few times until I get it to fit right and then we'll install it. It's not quite a throatless shear, but you can kind of get it to work like one, which makes cutting longer pieces a breeze. I just built this table, this workbench table, a couple of weeks ago, and I haven't, uh, I haven't quite figured out how I want to go ahead and and mount that or where I want to mount that on here if I'm even going to. So that's why it's kind of just chilling in the vise. And pretty rudimentary method of bending here. I have a quarter inch steel plate on top of it. And uh, all I'm gonna do is take a couple of clamps, piece of bar, and since it's only 18 gauge metal, it should bend relatively easy. Clamp down the bars. And I'm going to go at it and just hit it with a rubber mallet. I 
have a small piece here, uh, but it's pretty well rusted out. But I'm gonna check it with that and then just go verify it on the truck. According to this, it needs a little bit more. So we're gonna go with that first and see what happens. You can hear the metal getting a lot stronger now that there's a bend in it, or a couple bends really. Seeing how there's not much of the old inner structure. This is looking pretty good. My bends are a little sharper than what's down here, but my bottom edge lines up with the bottom flange down there and everything else is left pretty long i can bend this back to here so i think i think i'm actually pretty good with what i have because then the quarter panel is going to sit on and then as long as this is flush at the bottom, which looks like it is, I probably will leave this out. We'll test fit the quarter panel. We'll clamp in the quarter panel where it goes and then try to sneak this in from behind and then have it sit and rest in place hopefully be able to get a clamp on it maybe maybe a sheet metal screw so that way it holds it into the spot that it needs to be because what i'm afraid is i don't want to mount it i don't want to mount it too low here i don't want to guess in here i'm happy i'm happy with the way it looks sealant will take care of the difference in the bend over here and I'll just trim away from the plug. I gotta find this plug. I was missing this plug. I might have to get a new one. Um, and we'll go with that. So the next thing we're gonna do is test fit the quarter panel. Gotcha. And you always wonder when you're going to use a pair of clamps like that. Then it shows itself.
it's close and it's close enough that I feel comfortable trying to test fit the inside structure again. And it's gonna be really hard for you to see this, but I'm gonna try to sneak this up in here. Maybe. this off right there. Trying to do the best I can to show you what I'm working with, but it's a little bit difficult. Doesn't look bad. I mean, it's in, and it's to where I can fasten it. This is all lining up pretty good in through here, and then I'll leave it long. It's a little, I mean, it looks a little cattywampus. But once I trim it, you know, that's why I left everything long because I wasn't exactly sure how it was going to fit in here. And it's not terrible. I can, uh, I can work with that and I can live with that. Now I just have to work on the rest of the fitment, trim anything that I need to, and then we'll go for the final install. So let me keep working at it. So you can see I made some progress uh, after clamping in the internal structure. I sunk two sheet metal screws to kind of hold it into position and then took my eighth inch drill bit and went ahead and then pop riveted it a couple times and then put one pop rivet down here. Took my uh, seam sealer adhesive, went ahead and sealed everything. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a really good squeegee, so it kind of looks a little sloppy, but it'll do the trick. Uh, and then took one, the only primer I have in the shop at the moment is my weld through primer. So I put a coat of weld through primer on everything to cover everything up after the core seal was dry. Now we can go ahead and put the quarter panel back in. I went ahead and trimmed the one end here and the back end over on this end. And now it's just a matter of slipping it up in the position and clamping it up and seeing if, seeing if it fits again. So that's what we're, that's what we're going to do. So this is where having the patience comes into play with doing the alignment. It's just a matter of pushing, pulling, twisting, clamping, kind of doing the same process over and over again until you get it in the position where you can manipulate it and are happy with the fitment. Checking the body seams here, checking the seam gap along the tail light, double checking the seam 
to the back of the door. In this case, I have barn doors. It would be like the hatch, depending on what kind of suburban you have. And each, every way that you twist and move the panel is gonna make it move somewhere else. So it really just, you just gotta have the patience and realize that you're dealing with aftermarket parts. So they're not gonna be exactly like the originals that you take off. So you might need to bend and hammer the panels out a little bit. So I'm gonna just keep messing with it a little bit. I'm gonna open this door up and I think I'm gonna to try to sink a sheet metal screw into this top corner once, once I get it where I want it. I feel like if I put it right there and sink it in, I think that'll be a good place to start and then I'll end up clamping the lower, the lower portion. Almost in the same exact spot from my test fit. It's gotta go in. This will pull out. Simply just pulling out the bottom. Take a screw down the bottom and see what she looks like. Self tapping sheet metal screws really help out when you're trying to install panels and that is looking really good I can take my body hammer and beat down that seam right there just a little bit on the back side I like the way it fits to the to the door a lot of this is going to get covered by the bumper too so keep that in mind Much better. Much better. Now this truck has the plastic wheel arch molding that goes on it. So this um, will help you also align the body seams and you can kind of use the old dirt line of where it was at put this on and then what you're looking at is down here if you look there's like a little cutout in the molding and this cutout fits in this body seam so that if you have the plastic molding or the body moldings on the truck make sure you remember to test fit them as well And that is pretty good. I like the way that looks. And I call that a success. And it's really not really taking much to hold it in there. It's not like I have to distort or move the plastic molding. So I really like the way that looks. The seam lines up. The underneath inner structure now that I've bent this corner in a little bit. The inner structure fits real nice, flat. 
I like the way the tail light fits. I am pretty much very satisfied with the fit. Now we're gonna go to install it uh, permanently. It's, it's in, now we just have to drill, pop rivet, and adhesive. And basically we're done. So one of the last remaining steps in the installation process is <clears throat> installing with rivets. Now the preferred method, you know, in body shops would probably be spot welding, um, panel bond and spot welding. But I wanted to show you another option for installation uh, without using a welder. Now you won't always be able to you won't always be able to install quarter panels or body panels in this manner, but with this specific installation on the Suburban and the way that the panel was made, it made it a perfect opportunity to show you how to do something like this. So I'm using eighth inch steel pop rivets, drilling an eighth inch hole, clamping where I drill installing the pop rivet and then I'm just going to install probably five four or five rivets in along just make sure that you're feeling on the back side of the inner fender so that way you know you're drilling into the inner wheelhouse as well so this way here you get a good strong bond between the two pieces of metal Now the nice thing is because this has the wheel arch molding, uh, a lot of this stuff will get covered by the plastics. And then what doesn't, obviously you'll probably end up seeing these two bottom pop rivets, but once it's painted, um, they'll hardly be noticed. And to be honest, I'm not really worried about it because I'd much rather look at two pop rivets than a big freaking hole of rust sitting here in a quarter. And like I said, I'm trying to show you another avenue of installation other than using spot welds. Um, you could probably use panel bond on this whole seam, clamp it, and then just wait for the panel bond to set too. But at least we have some mechanical adhesion, and then we're also gonna use chemical adhesion because what I'm gonna do now that this is riveted, I'm gonna come in with the sealer uh, adhesive and then inject it into the seam and then flatten it out and let that also kind of seal and hold everything along with the pop rivets. Now what I have to do is just go secure the back end and the bottom, and then we'll go to the adhesive part. Now to the bottom. Uh, one thing that you might be asking yourself is why didn't you throw adhesive in behind the seams and then pop rivet it? And the only reason being is it just makes a sloppy mess, or at least for me, I make a sloppy mess with it. It seems like once you crack seal and open, it just tends to get everywhere. Honestly, the pop rivets are plenty strong enough to hold the sheet metal in place. And then once I get the bottom tied in and then get everything sealed, I'm not really worried about it. it it'll be uh, a okay.
One last thing about drilling and pop riveting, and really just any kind of work, especially when you're drilling, be careful of where you're drilling and what's behind the panel and where you're drilling, because you never know where there might be a wiring harness, a brake line, a fuel line, just depending on what kind of car or vehicle you're working on. So. Now that the panel's pop riveted in, we're gonna to move to the sealant part and wrap up the installation. Now up until now, everything has been kind of par for the course, right? You know, we got a little off track maybe with a pop rivet here and there, not a big deal. But now things might get a little weird. Just saying. Um, for the adhesive, I'm going to use something that I can promise you. You would not think about it. Now, I'm not saying to use it. I am just using it. Uh, I started using it probably about five or six years ago on an old boat project that I had. I was trying to install a rub rail on a boat restoration project that I did for myself. And whether you're talking automotive or marine, sealants and adhesives are really expensive. And I was trying to be cost conscious and I went shopping at Home Depot of all places. And I found a polyurethane based sealant adhesive. And I used it on my boat and subjected it to the salt and the sun and it never failed. No cracking, no peeling, no fading. Um, and it sat out in the sun and in the salt for over five years. So ever since then, it's just been something that I've had and used. Never really had a problem with it. This will be kind of like the first time I'm using it in the auto body sense. But if I didn't think it would work, I wouldn't be using it. And what I am talking about is this. P&L Brands Loctite Roof and Flashing Adhesive Sealant. And like I said a minute ago, this is a polyurethane-based sealant. Now, the upside to this is cost. Uh, I can get a tube of this for right around eight bucks. So it's one-third to one-fourth the price of panel bond adhesive or even like a marine sealant. Uh, with the panel bond, you're going to need like, they're generally like epoxy based, which is like a two part. So you're going to need the, the application gun to go along with them. Not all of them, um, are two, two part, uh, epoxy, but this is polyurethane. The downside is how long it takes to dry. So it cures to attack in like 24 hours, but it cures out right around like seven days. So keep that in mind for whatever project you're using. So that is the downside. Upside cost, downside time. This isn't going anywhere, so I'm not worried about the timing on this. So that is what I'm using. Uh, and right now what I'm doing is I am setting up for the injection and then the swipe. Now, in the very beginning of this video, I talked about where I was making the cut with my grinder. And this is where it plays into uh, a key factor. Uh, the panel, I did not cut the panel at the roll of the body seam because what I'm going to use is I'm going to use light and the reflection and the roll in the body to help hide the fact that I installed the quarter panel. So once I set it up and swipe this line, 
basically caulk and paint make it what it ain't because from a distance, the light will reflect on this pot panel and will catch on the roll of this seam, which will take your eye away from the actual repair. Now, the reason being is I did not want to get involved in blending this out. My goal is to repair the quarter and paint from the seam down, blending at the seam and making it so your eye doesn't catch it. So you have to use the reflection in the body seam to help with that. So what I'm doing right now is I am just setting it up with a little bit of masking tape. So this way here, I can be sloppy. And go ahead and leave me a comment and tell me I'm off my rocker because I might be. I like finding different ways to accomplish the same task at a cheaper, at a cheaper price. Now, ask me in six months how this looks and we can talk about it. But like I told you, I wouldn't do it if I didn't think it was going to work. So now that this is set up, I'm going to take my little pry bar, plastic pry bar, if I can get it in there. There we go. There we go. Now that pushes out the panel. And you're going to want to wear gloves regardless whatever type of sealant that you're using because we're about to make a mess and it's sticky and it just helps. Let's see if I can get this down any further. All right. And I'm gonna be generous with it because I can be. And I am going to just push it way up in there. Let it squeeze out the bottom as well. Pull out the pry bar and basically just I'm going to let it sit really just in its natural. I don't want to push on it too hard. I'm just going to let it sit in its natural state. This way here, there's not going to be like a separation of the adhesive. I will tap on a little bit. And here we go with a swipe. Just simply using your finger, or my finger, just take the first swipe to get some of this stuff out of here. And like I said, I'm not worried about how much I use, because that's where the cost comes in. And then I'm going to use it as like a squeegee and squeegee the seams on the inside. And then with a the firm pressure, make one final pull. And what you're going to want to see, or what I want to see, is I want to see that green tape line right at the top, which I see. 
I'm going to go one more time with my pinky this time. And once you get it to the point where you are happy, go ahead and peel your tapes. Don't do that to me. And just like that, we're done. Turned out really well. I'm happy with that. Even right up on it, there's so much light glare hitting right here and up here on the edge that once that gets painted, I don't think anybody will know except me and you. Don't tell nobody. So that's where we're gonna wrap up today's video with the completed installation of the quarter panel on this 2004 Chevy Suburban. Uh, there will be some links in the description with some of the pieces and tools that I used in order to install this. Uh, keep in mind, not all of the installations, uh, depending on what kind of vehicle you're working on, will go as smoothly, or will you be able to use the method in which I installed this? this Installation is more specific for the Suburban because that's clearly what we're working on. So I know that this is gonna work for this application. So with whatever you're working on, make sure you do your due diligence, um, spend the time reading up on whatever application that you're working on as far as vehicles concerned, uh, read up on uh, panels, quality, where you're getting them from, um, tools and obviously sealants and everything else that you're going to need for the project to prepare yourself for what it takes. Make sure you also have patience uh, in with the process because with moving these things around, uh, it really does take some time. I honestly think that you could probably do a job like this within a day, definitely within a weekend. Uh, I could have probably got this side done in a few hours had I not been filming, even though I spanned it out over a couple days. Uh, that's just because there's other things going on. It really was um, a straightforward process, pretty simple. And you really just need some basic hand tools to do something like this. So that is the end of today's video. Stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel because I will be painting this with rattle can. Uh, we're going to go about this painting it without an air compressor as well. So stay tuned for that. I have to finish sealing it, let the sealant dry, and then there's also a few other areas. I think we will be tackling the rocker on the driver's side in an upcoming video. So we're going to be handling that as well. So my name is Paul Michael. This has been Challenge to Build. Hopefully you've learned something from this video. Stay tuned for more. Now you need to go out there and challenge your build. And I will see you in an upcoming video.
Thank you.